Hi everyone, my name is Lee and I am working on a feature length documentary called After EDC and I'm doing this with a lot of support from an organization I used to volunteer for called Dance Safe. Now before I tell you what uh, After EDC is about and why we're trying to raise funds for it, let me tell you a little bit about what Dance Safe represents. So I ran the San Francisco chapter of Dance Safe from 2000 to 2007 and our mission has always been to maintain the health and safety of young people in the rave scene through the practice of harm reduction. Now what harm reduction means is that we don't condone nor do we condemn drug use, but we just recognize that despite the dangers of drugs or social stigma or criminal penalties against drugs, there's still always going to be some young people that out there that choose to take drugs. And as long as that's the case, we need to be realistic and you know provide educational and public health resources to this population so that you know if they are using drugs at least they know as, as much as they need to about the drugs and what dangers are associated with them and how to minimize those dangers and uh, this is a public health approach that places like Europe and Canada they've adopted this for a very long time but here in the United States trying to do harm reduction work and trying to promote harm reduction uh, it's always been quite a bit of a challenge I kind of take the harm prevention approach which is I know you're gonna do it we know kids are gonna do it why not get them educated about it? I mean, they really don't have any idea what it's about, and they're taking these drugs from people they don't know. Well, what wouldn't we want kids not to do? I'm thinking... I don't... I'm not saying that they should do it. We want to keep people alive and as healthy as possible until they're ready to make their own choice to stop using. Sounds like and it looks like you're endorsing drug use. I think safe maybe is the wrong word in their name. Maybe it should be dance deadly, dance dangerous. So America's still kind of stuck on this belief that uh, if you're not teaching and enforcing abstinence, that you're you know, promoting drug use, that the only way to keep kids safe is to focus only on abstinence and uh, just kind of hope that kids stay away from drugs. And that's, that's a huge reason why it's been very difficult for a lot of promoters of raves and festivals to kind of have harm reduction and dance safe services at their events. So while the work that I did was a lot of fun and rewarding, it was also very hard to do and it was very hard to get uh, people on our side. So that's why, you know, across the country, uh, you know, harm reduction resources are, are kind of lacking. And that's kind of been the case in Los Angeles with events such as Electric Daisy Carnival. So I came to Los Angeles in 2007 and I attended Electric Daisy Carnival from 2007 to 2009 and what I witnessed was you know this huge festival that's uh, turned into the biggest music festival in the country and you know as this event's gotten bigger and bigger at the same time uh, this population you know hasn't had any harm reduction resources and services for many years but the funny thing is at the time that uh, EDC 2010 took place which was in late June uh, that was the, the specific time when I reconnected with Dance Safe and we decided to launch a documentary project um, about harm reduction and the rave scene in Los Angeles. And at first it wasn't going to be anything about anything specific, like it wasn't going to be about any particular event like EDC or any particular incident. But then that slowly started to change when I started watching all the news footage of EDC. Coliseum says no more raves until further notice. This after a weekend of mayhem at the Electric Daisy Carnival. A 15-year-old girl died of a suspected drug overdose. The 15-year-old died last night following the weekend-long music fest at the L.A. Coliseum. So many casualties from this event, even though there were police, paramedics, and private security in attendance. Right now, one teen is in critical condition. Another teen died right here at California Hospital Medical Center. And there was just something about this event, something about this specific tragedy with this girl. Uh, that just made it very newsworthy to the local news media. And that's when I decided that I would uh, make a documentary specifically about EDC and what happened and why the news media was making such a big deal out of it. And most importantly, all the changes that were coming out of it as a result. And then um, my documentary story really came to light when I started to learn about this rave safety task force that was developing. The Board of Supervisors approved the formation of the Rave Safety Task Force. The county's director of public health already has some of his recommendations. So education through the schools, education of the families, education of the individuals there. But if the Electric Daisy Carnival promoter has his way, music event promoters will have a seat on the board. These individuals could both inform the rest of the group about the realities of the electronic music event industry 
and help the task force with outreach. So that was the first thing that uh, they weren't trying to ban EDC or other events. They were trying to keep them. Now the second thing that was really interesting was that LA County decided to delegate the public health department to run this task force, which means that the local government, Los Angeles, was looking at this as a public health matter, which is how DanceSafe approaches it. So that was the, the second thing I noticed, which made it very interesting. And then the third thing was that uh, the people that were brought on to be a part of this task force included promoters such as Insomniac Productions uh, that puts on EDC and other promoters and DJs in the local community and industry. And when I found out that these type of people were being invited to be on the task force along with the public health department to come up with a plan, that's when I realized I've never witnessed a major government body such as you know a Los Angeles County uh, Public Health Department working with a major promotional company such as uh, Insomniac Productions. Now back when I was working on uh, in Dance Safe, you know this is the kind of stuff that I dreamed about. You know I always wished that you know our harm reduction work would get support from like a major government body and from big promoters everywhere. But you know a lot of times it was very controversial for them to do that, and so I didn't think it would ever be possible. So what happened in Los Angeles after EDC is something that means a lot to me personally and uh, that's, uh, that's when my film really became a complete story. Educate yourself and your friends on how to stay safe. So we can all play. Play. Play another day. This movement can kind of spread, you know, if we keep this discussion going and we uh, teach people that this can be possible. And that's why I'm trying to finish this film and kind of share it with the world and, you know, teach uh, everyone that this can be done and this can be done elsewhere in places outside of Los Angeles. So if this is a message that you agree with, then I invite you to do two things right now. Uh, the first is to go check out the trailer for this film. And you, do, you can do that by going to YouTube and doing a search for After EDC Official Trailer. And the second thing I invite you to do is to help us out by pledging a donation to this project. So right now we're trying to raise uh, $10,000 to pay for shooting and editing and uh, getting a music composer, licensing other music and legal fees. Uh, that will maximize the quality of this project and help us tell a complete thorough story. And the more money we raise, of course, the quicker we'll be able to get it done. So that's our primary goal. But of course, if we could raise even more than $10,000, that'll help us along in the next step of the process, which is actually marketing and distributing the film. And if we're able to uh, get this film you know, through DVD sales or in film festivals and theaters and if we generate any revenue a portion of that revenue is actually going to go back to dance safe so uh if you actually help us raise enough money to distribute uh the film then uh one of the things that you're helping with is actually contributing directly to dance safe and on top of that, uh, every donor is going to get a gift as a thank you from us for helping out. Uh, so depending on your donation amount, you might get a DVD or poster of the film. You might get uh, merchandise from the DanceSafe website. You might even get a screen credit of your name at the end of the film. And uh, if you can't donate at this time, you can still help out and be a part of this movement and this campaign by spreading the word. You know, forwarding the trailer and this video that you're watching and mainly the campaign page link to all your friends and family who might want to support. Um, I invite you to join me in uh, making sure that this document gets finished and that uh, we're able to share with as many audiences around the world as possible so that the message of uh, harm reduction and supporting the electronic dance community can spread and grow. So uh, with that in mind, um, I hope you check out more information on the campaign page and donate or spread the word and I hope to see you become a part of this campaign. Thank you.